and welcome to this in-depth tutorial about Dolby Atmos Composer. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to configure and export your Dolby Atmos mix, as well as importing an existing Dolby Atmos mix. We'll use a Pro Tools session here, but the process should be very similar with other DAWs. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to know what Dolby Atmos is and how it works. If you're not up to speed on this yet, please watch our introduction tutorial about Dolby Atmos and the Composer workflow. You'll also need to know how setup, routing, and monitoring work inside our Dolby Atmos Composer plugin. All of this is explained in the previous tutorial. Our Dolby Atmos Composer Essential plugin has only two things you can adjust before export. The first thing is the master gain setting, and the second thing is the binaural mode for each channel of your Dolby Atmos mix. Let's talk about the master gain first. This control is available in both versions of the plugin, and it does exactly the same thing. It easily lets you adjust the volume of your mix without having to touch each and every incoming connection. This makes it easy to match the loudness targets required by distributors. If you have the full version of the plugin, you can find this on the options page. The second thing that you can change is the binaural mode for each channel of your Dolby Atmos mix. If you have the full version of the plugin, you can find this option on the input configuration tab. It works exactly the same way in both versions. Atmos offers four different options for each channel, and your selection here tells the Atmos renderer how to process each channel during binaural playback. Off means that no binaural processing is applied to the channel, while the remaining three modes differ in the perceived distance. Now we're going to cover those extra features that are only available in the full version of this plugin. If you just own the essential version and are only interested in the features found there, you can jump straight to the export section of this tutorial without missing anything important. If you're interested in what the full version has to offer, well, keep watching. In the full version of Composer, you can also change the channel description and the group for each input channel. For the composite, both must be the same for all channels, which are set automatically by the composer. The description is just text you can enter into the text field, and the group can be selected from a drop-down menu. You can manage the available groups found in the list on the right side of the Options page. There you can add and remove groups from the list. These groups are then available for selection on each channel in the input configuration. With the export button on each group, you can decide if the channels in the group will be exported or not. By default, this option is switched on, so all groups will be exported. To the left of the group's management section is a set of controls which allow you to configure how your mix will be rendered on certain speaker layouts. The first two drop-down menus let you choose the algorithm for downmixing from 5.1 to stereo and from 7.x to 5.1 and 5.1.x. This is used for monitoring and when exporting your mix to a multi-channel WAV file. To know exactly what these algorithms do, please refer to the manual of the Dolby Atmos Composer. Below that, we find the controls to set trim and balance values for three different speaker layouts. The nearby dropdown lets you select which of the layouts you'll be editing. If automatic is switched on, the Dolby Atmos renderer sets these values internally and the knobs are grayed out. If automatic is switched off, the knobs become available for manual adjustment. The trim knobs are attenuations in dB. One knob sets the attenuation for the surround speakers, while the other sets the attenuation for the speakers in the upper plane, or the height speakers. All associated surround and height speakers are attenuated by the values set here. The balance values are in percent and determine the front-back balancing ratio. This applies to both the ear level listening plane and the overhead height plane. Positive values emphasize the front while negative values emphasize the back. Below that are the plugin's three master settings, sample rate, frame rate, and timecode start. Sample rate can be set to either 48 or 96 kHz, as these two are the only options allowed for Dolby Atmos content. If your DAW session does not match the sample rate, 
an error is displayed next to the sample rate dropdown telling you that your session is at the wrong sample rate. Also, the error button becomes visible and you are prevented from exporting until correcting your session's sample rate. It's also worth mentioning here that the optimal buffer size you should set your DAW to is 512 samples if you're working in 48 kilohertz and 1024 samples if you're working at 96 kilohertz. The frame rate drop menu lets you select your project's frames per second setting. This option is only relevant if you're producing Dolby Atmos content for video or film. The various timecode values shown throughout the plugin, such as timecode start, as well as the in point and out point, are calculated based on the selected frame rate. Timecode start should be set to the timecode with which your DAW session starts. This value and the frame rate must be set correctly in order for the in point and out point values to be correctly displayed as timecode. When it comes to exporting, we first have to tell the Composer plugin what we want to export. The essential version of the plugin can export the ADM BWF file and or a multi-channel WAV file of the renderer output in the format selected for monitoring. It can export both things simultaneously. The full version of the plugin gives you both of these options as well as a third option to export the headphone output. Again, all of these exports can be selected simultaneously. You'll obviously need to select at least one export option for the exporter to work. By default, ADM BWF is selected, which is the delivery format of your Dolby Atmos mix. Each of the renderer outputs can be set to export as one single multi-channel file or as a set of mono files, one for each channel. Once you have selected one of the two options, you can then select your desired format. This will set the renderer to the selected format and monitoring will also be set to this format. You'll see this on the monitoring tab. So if you have exported to another format, you may need to switch this back to your normal monitoring mode before carrying on. Next, you have to tell the composer which part of your DAW session you want to export. Remember that you don't have to export the entire session and that you can export a smaller section if you like. We do this by setting the in point and out point. That can be done either by clicking the on-screen buttons or manually. If you enter the values manually, you can do so either in timecode or in samples. The unit button allows you to switch between both. Let's also select 5.1 as the speaker layout for export as multi-mono files and binaural for headphone export as one multi-channel file, which in this case will contain the two channels of binaural audio. Now the only thing left to do is to click the export button and select where to save the file. Let's label it Atmos. The Composer plugin is now in export mode and waiting to begin. You can export either by starting playback before the in point and just letting it run through to the out point, or use your DAW's offline export function. Let's first do this by simply playing back our session. We used to be a team, we see the dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a womb with all that I could do But I'm not here to lick your wounds or to solve your issues If you want, you can choose And now we can do the same export by using the bounce or offline export function of the DAW Remember that files relevant for us are created by the Composer plugin. We don't need the export from the DAW and we can safely delete that. If we have a look at the exported files, we can see the atmos.wav file with the name we selected. This is our ADM BWF file. Next to it, we also see the renderer export files. 
These are the six mono files that belong to the 5.1 render, and finally the stereo file that contains our binaural export. Both versions of the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin have an import function for ADM BWF files. You can import any valid Dolby Atmos ADM BWF file for playback, further tweaks, and re-export. After loading a file, the composer goes into file mode. As you can see in file mode, the connections in the list on the left disappear and the playback controls become visible at the bottom. During playback, you can measure the loudness on the monitoring tab and then use the master gain knob to adjust the volume of the mix in case you find that you need to do this. To be a team, we see the dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a wound with all that I could do, but I'm not here to lick your wounds. Or in the essential version of the plugin, you can change the binaural mode in the channel list next to the master gain knob. If you have the full version, you can change the binaural mode, description, and group for the channels of the imported files on the input configuration page. On the options page, you can also change the downmix and trim values. You can also manage available groups for selection on the input configuration page. Notice that the sample rate and frame rate cannot be changed, but you can set a new timecode start if you need to. And now you can re-export the imported file with the changes you've made, as an ADM BWF and or as individual WAV files as you would with any Dolby Atmos mixing session. The only difference is that you do not need to set the in point and out point since the start and end of the imported mix are already known. When you are done working with the imported file, just click Unload and the composer switches back from file mode to normal operation. And your connections become visible again together with all of the settings of your Dolby Atmos mix. That's it for this one, folks. If you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials about Dolby Atmos Composer. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss news, tips, and updates. There's more to come, so I'll see you in the next one.